Hi, folks. Welcome to Crisco's Corner. Welcome back, all you mega extremists and thought criminals. I hate to do this to you, but I'm going to do a little story on the PolitiFact, which is as left as they come, but I think this is an article worth looking at. Can Donald Trump run for president if charged and convicted of removing official records? If you remember, that's what they're trying to get him for. And there's a picture of Mar-a-Lago. Security moves in a golf court of former presidents, and you see the Secret Service guys and the security around. And that's if your time is short. Uh, basically, a lot of the things they talked about concerning convicted people running for public office. Well, let's get to the article. The FBI search of former President Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate raises questions about whether a statute that bans the removal of official records could bar Trump from running for president in 2024. Trump said in a statement August 8th that Mar-a-Lago was currently under siege, raided, and occupied by a large group of, of FBI agents. They even broke into my safe. This is shortly after this article was written. Without access to the search warrant or other investigative documents, there's not a lot we know about the search. And, of course, the FBI just, and the Justice Department had no comment to, to uh, PolitiFact. Multiple news stories connected the investigation to official documents brought from the White House to Mar-a-Lago. And it goes on about the boxes and how the National Archives alerted the Justice Department and blah, 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 and, and what Eric Trump thought of it. And but let's, we, I'll, I'll, I'll scroll through this. You can stop the video if you want to read it all. The federal statute says it is a crime to willfully and intentionally remove official records, and that such a crime would disqualify the defendant from holding any office under the United States. But some legal scholars say that statute can't be used to bar Trump from a 2024 presidential bid. The Constitution's lift the criteria to run for president mentions only age, citizenship, and residency. There is no mention of criminal charges or convictions. And you're going to see, it's interesting, uh, in the past, how people that have committed felonies actually have run for president while they were in jail. Whether Trump is also going to be charged by prosecutors is a matter of speculation. It's, it's basically about January 6th, because if they can prove there was an insurrection and an attempt to overthrow the government, that would bar Trump. The Constitution doesn't bar criminals for running for president. Now, it says the Presidential Records Act of 1978 was basically about Nixon, who tried to hide a lot of the records and the cover-up. So it's like, you know, even though Nixon, if you take out Watergate, Nixon was actually a good president. The law overturned the long-running tradition of private ownership that dated back to the beginning of the Republic by declaring that after January 20th, 1981, that's basically when Ronald Reagan came in, the records of all presidents would be the property of the American people. So they passed the code, uh, 2071 U.S., that long ban removal. It says willfully and unlawfully removing such records can result in a penalty. Up to three years in prison, the defendant shall forfeit his office and be disqualified from holding any office in the United States. A lawyer who litigates litigation cases on behalf of Democrats highlighted that the line about disqualification tweeted, the media, now this is a Democratic lawyer. The media is missing the really, really big reason why the raid today is a potential blockbuster in American politics. But a subsequent tweet, he wrote, there would undoubtedly be a constitutional challenge to the application of the law to be a president. And the, the scholars go back and forth. And even a law expert at UCLA said he doesn't see a conviction for violating 18 U.S. 2071 preventing Trump. The statute cannot... Trump the Constitution, pardon the pun, which sets the exclusive qualifications for president. So this is not a path to making Trump legally ineligible to run for office. And they know this. And there's a qualification. You have to be 35, a resident for 14 years, and a natural-born citizen. That's why those of you that are wondering why Alexander Hamilton, who was a brilliant guy, even though he's an SOB, why he never ran for president, because he was born in the Bahamas, I believe, or Jamaica, I forgot which one. 
Previous Supreme Court rulings hold that a state cannot prohibit indicted or convicted felons for running for federal office, and Congress cannot add qualification to the office of president, said a law professor at the University of Iowa, because you'd have to have a constitutional amendment to do that. Someone could use the record statute to attempt to challenge Trump's potential run for office, and the courts would then rule on the constitutionality of his bid, which the court would easily side with the Constitution, especially the court we have today. And here's the one that really was interesting. I remember this. Convicted felons have run for president and lost. Lyndon LaRoche, I remember him, was convicted in 1988 of tax and mail fraud conspiracy and ran for president multiple times between 1976 and 2004. Now, this is the one that really is interesting. Eugene Debs, convicted of violating the Espionage Act. Now, you remember, that's what they tried to get Trump on. The Espionage Act of 1917 for anti-war speech. He fought. He did a speech against the war, and that was against the law. They put him in federal prison when he ran for president as a socialist in 1920. He was physically in federal prison as a candidate. Deb supporters handed out campaign buttons for prisoner 9653. He goes on to say that would be difficult for someone that was in prison to run a candidacy, but. But here's the part that they're gonna, the, the, the Democrats can't get around. The Justice Department lays about multiple criteria to prove a case under the records law, including that the defendant must act intentionally with knowledge he is violating a law. A previous case suggests the defendant must know that the documents are public records. Uh, Hillary Clinton, for example. You remember just before the election in 2016... Cheney, then the FBI director, or excuse me, call me the FBI director, said that even though she broke the law, her intention was not to violate the law, so there was no prosecution. Might not be hard to prove this since presidents are briefed on the importance of presidential records and their preservation, but no mention of their security implications. A University of New York professor said prosecutors would not necessarily have to show that Trump physically removed the records. If Trump's aides removed records with him or, at, or in his direction, Trump would be responsible, which I don't buy. I don't buy that for a minute. Congress could act to bar Trump from running again under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, which says the public officials cannot serve in any future federal, state, military office, so forth. If they engage in insurrection or rebellion... The Senate has not pursued that route. It could have banned Trump from running again during impeachment proceedings and chose not to do that. It's unknown how the committee investigating Trump's actions around January 6th attack may address the prospect of Trump's candidacy. Now, they say January 6th attack now instead of insurrection. Notice how the rhetoric is t toning down. The timing of any potential charges against Trump is unclear. They might want to avoid indicting him before the November elections, but I found out today that over 40 Trump associates that worked for Trump in the White House were subpoenaed, and another 30-plus were actually raided by the FBI all in one day. That pretty much goes against the 60-day rule before Election Day. And it's happened before. Uh, former Secretary Casper Weinberger was indicted just before the election. And Marilyn Garland wrote in a main memo about election year sensitivities that no investigation or prosecution should take place for the purpose of affecting any election. The memo does not expressly ban the filing of charges, but says prosecutors consult public integrity guidelines, whatever the hell that means in English. The long and the short of it is, even some of the anti-Trump people, as you've seen on here, that are law professors and so-called experts say it's going to be impossible to stop him from running for president. Now, they can say, you want to put a jailbird in the White House? They can use that crap, but they got so much crap they throw at Trump, it really doesn't matter. So then you have to ask yourself, what are all these raids and subpoenas all really and truly all about? They'll never, ever get President Trump for insurrection and try to overthrow the government. That's a joke. And even the people that hate Trump's guts, if you ask them, if you cornered them, they say, well, we hate his guts, we want him to go to jail, but he didn't do that. 
So removing records in a box is going to bar somebody from running for president? I don't believe it either. It's not what people do is why. So you have to ask yourself why are all these ex-Trump associates and officials now being raided and subpoenaed under the January 6th committee? Now, there's more than 60 days left of this Congress. You have to remember, I believe it's January 3rd that the new Congress is sworn in. So that gives them half of September, all of October, all of November, all of December. We're looking at about basically 100 plus days. And they might indict him two days before this Congress's term is up. So I don't know what's going to happen, but they're going after all the Trump people. They're making it so they're telling in the future, you help Donald Trump get elected. You work for Donald Trump in his administration. We will ruin your life. They're doing that with his lawyers. Tons of lawyers he wanted to hire that were very good, I'm sure very expensive, but they were very good. Had to tell President Trump, no, they'll ruin our lives and it's just frankly not worth it. Now, I'm sure, I hope, I pray that he gets competent legal uh, representation. I'm sure he will. But that's what third world republics do. And we're on very uncharted territory and very dangerous territory. The more they go after Trump, the more are really and truly our republic is at stake. And people that hate Donald Trump don't want to hear that, but that is the truth. And until next time, goodbye and good luck.